miracle can happen now. A miracle can happen now. Put that slide back up there if you would. A miracle can happen now. Wow. That's incredible. It can happen now. It can happen today. It can happen in this place. A miracle can happen now for the spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. Yes that the Spirit of the Lord is here. Lord Jesus, it's our prayer. It's our prayer, oh God, that your Spirit would minister to your people today in a way that brings you joy, in a way, oh God, that brings you happiness. Lord God, it is my desire today, I just ask, oh God, that this church today could bring joy to heaven. I pray, oh God, that they can hear our praise down here, up there. Yes. It's our prayer, oh God, that our connection with heaven today will be that they'll have us on closed circuit TV yes. in heaven. In the that they could understand that we long to be with them. That we long for heaven to be here. Yes. Be with us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Praise God. A miracle can happen. I'm a miracle. Are you a miracle? Wow. 20, 30 years ago, some three or four years ago, some maybe 40 years ago, would have never thought you'd have been here today. Amen to that. But a miracle happened. That's right. And it changed what was going to be to what is. Yes. Because God has the last word. Amen. Amen. I get the privilege of uh, opening up our new season. That's right. The pastors allowed me to do this, and I, and the elders, and it's a, indeed an honor to, to stand before you on behalf of the kingdom of God. And uh, I can do a real good job if you'll overlook a lot of stuff. We're going to see how much grace you have. And it's amazing how my heart is to, is to speak for the kingdom of God. And I know sometimes it, it's, I don't know how it comes out. I know how it's in my heart. And believe it or not, you can help pull it out of my heart. And that's right, isn't it, preacher? So if, uh, if y'all will help me pull it out, we'll, I'll try to get my best to give you the best I got, and uh, hopefully we can receive something from the Lord. And there again, it's my privilege to bring this morning this uh, series on the King, Thy Kingdom Come. The last season we were in was the kingdom culture, leading us into, we spent almost a year preparing for this one, Thy Kingdom Come. As you noticed when you came in, there's some circles of chairs at the back. Did anybody notice those with reserved seats in them? Uh, you'll never guess who they're reserved for. Don't get scared yet. And Now what we have those for is um, in thy kingdom come this season, we're wanting to give adequate opportunity for prayer. And there will be an elder in each. Uh, we couldn't figure out a name to call them. I, I ended up calling them a prayer pod. I, I guess because iPods and pod this and pod that, I don't know. But we're calling them prayer pods until somebody figures out a better name. And uh, so there's four of them there. And then we'll have one up here also if we need be and up here. But the idea is for a season here, we're going to be bringing... Uh, some uh, teachings on thy kingdom come yes. and the opportunity that's in these prayer pods are there'll be an elder there with one or two uh, assistants and during the invitation you can just go to that prayer circle there and there'll be an elder there and a couple people and uh, we are going to pray that his kingdom will come to what your petition is and uh 
And we're even fine if, uh, listen, if the Holy Spirit speaks to you and you say, I'm supposed to get prayer now, you just go right on back there and sit down and I'll, we'll get an elder there. And you don't have to wait for, for me or anybody else to quit talking if the Holy Ghost is saying, move, right? right? Because we're wanting to yield to the Holy Spirit in this place. It's a little different. It's not, it's not that much difference. We'll, we'll worship together and perhaps we'll leave just a little more time for prayer and we'll have worship here at the end. And uh, So if it sounds like I'm trying to know what I'm doing, I'm doing real good. Because we don't, um, we're trying to, we're trying to give an opportunity for God That's right. to speak to His people, and uh, we don't want it to be intimidating. We want it to be a relaxed atmosphere. We want it to be real. That's right. Is that okay? So there'll be an elder in each one of these at the end of the service or any time you need want to go back there for prayer. And with and what the purpose is, we're praying for His kingdom to come. Uh, if uh, these are not utilized and it looks like people aren't uh, needing prayer in that fashion, we'll put the chairs back up in a few weeks or whatever. It just has everything to do with uh, us moving in the Spirit. And I hope that after this uh, message that it will help us in understanding thy kingdom come. What, is the, what does that mean, thy kingdom come? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so this is, I'm going to try to bring some revelation to this, if you'll follow with me. Now, as I began this, I began it with the word, what? Uh, what brings peace to the dying? What? No, what brings peace to the dying yet is dangerous enough to be banned from schools? What is famous enough to be quoted around the world, yet personal enough to be spoken by one? <coughs> what is small enough to be memorized by children, yet powerful enough to change the world? What in the world is this? Wow. It's this prayer in Matthew 6, 9 through 13. And it reads like this. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. That prayer is memorized by children. But that prayer has changed the world. Jesus gave the disciples an answer. He said, they said they wanted an example of prayer. So Jesus gave them this example. Now remember the season that we're, what we're asking for is what the disciples were. We were wanting this kingdom of God to come. So Jesus said, well, in this manner, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Our Father, it gives us the idea that Jesus has given us the example of how to pray. The example is our Father. So therefore, Jesus is saying you approach God as your, like you would your Father. And in approaching a Father, the Father's love for the child is incredible. He will give his life for the child. That's right. Now that's the father. He says, hallowed be your name. And this is something I think in the church house, uh, sometimes we let fall a little bit. Hallowed be your name means a reverence. 
It means a, a, a reverence to our Father. It's just like in this sanctuary here. There is a reverence we would like to always to maintain. It, uh, as we got the prayer pods at the back and dear, dear ministries were praying for each other. It's just this reverence of, of the Father that uh, Jesus is speaking about here. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now, in this prayer, uh, the first part of this prayer is speaking about uh, God. The second part of it is speaking about man. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts. Then the third part is talking about the evil one. So in this little small prayer, we have God the Father, we have man, and we have the evil one. And to consider, this prayer has changed the world. Do you know that this is the prayer that has been prayed more than anything in the whole world? Is that not amazing? I was going to put the estimate of the number of times that they felt like that's prayed a day in the world, and I couldn't read it, so I didn't see any need putting it up here. <laughs> it was incredible. It says recited by children. or, But this prayer is incredible. The idea being people all over the globe all the time are praying for God's kingdom to come. It's a known fact that the, that the Berlin Wall, the, the wall came down because of prayer. It's a known fact. It was prayed down. Yeah. Something to consider here when Jesus was explaining this prayer. If we want the kingdom of God to be manifested in this place, consider it has to prayed in. Right. It can be invited, but it must be prayed in. Right. The presence of God is prayed in. The kingdom of God is prayed in. That's good. Why do you think that prayer was come against so strongly in our schools? It's because it brings in the kingdom, the presence of the kingdom. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in, in heaven. Is that powerful or what? That is tremendously powerful. But what we must see is the kingdom of God is prayed in. It's the reason I felt like our Wednesday night service, a house of prayer, should be the biggest service that this church has. That's right. Yes. The church... We must see that prayer is everything. <coughs> prayer is a conversation with God. At one time, we could not have a conversation with God. But since the cross of Christ, we can now have a conversation with God, an ongoing conversation with God. And it's through that conversation with God that His presence and His kingdom is prayed in. So I would like for us to consider that. Now, your kingdom come. God is establishing his kingdom on this earth through his church. Now, as we are entering into this uh, season of thy kingdom come here at New Life, we're asking that you participate, that you be part of it. We'll have a... Uh, Oh, we got here. You cannot long for the kingdom without longing for the king. Wow. Just won't happen. That's good. You cannot long for the kingdom without longing for the king. It says this in Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Huh. The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. He starts giving us an idea here, the Apostle Paul. 
Then he goes on with this one. He says that the kingdom of God is within you. Now, here we're going to get a little sticky. The kingdom of God is within you. It says it in Luke chapter 17. Now, when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation. Nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. Now, here's something for us to consider. The kingdom, there's times we want to see signs and wonders as proof of the kingdom. But the real truth of the kingdom is what's going on in the hearts of people. So as the kingdom moves in our hearts, it is then and there that we know the kingdom is among us. Because it is moving. The kingdom of God is where? He says here, it is within you. So if the kingdom of God's coming, we're saying that the kingdom of God is coming to stir within us. It's saying a lot, isn't it? Now, I thought this was a nice little quote. Is prayer your steering wheel or your spare tire? Whoa. You know who said that? Oh. Well, this thing is trigger happy. There it is. You can't hardly see that. It's Corey Tim Boone. She said, is prayer your steering wheel or your spare tire? Now, the idea of the kingdom of God coming is as believers for us to start identifying with what the scriptures are saying. If we're going to identify with the kingdom of God, we must identify more with prayer. Prayer is the language of the kingdom. Yes. The kingdom coming is a constant conversation with heaven. We can't miss that. Please hear me, church. It's a constant conversation. If we want more of the kingdom in this place, the way it's going to happen is if we're in conversation more with heaven. Amen. Jesus said, pray like this. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we find by that that the way this transaction takes place is through prayer. It's through prayer. We can wait all we want to, but it's prayed in. Come on. That's the way it works. Good, so wherever what your prayer life is now, consider upping it a little bit. I don't know, has anybody noticed that uh, prayer of the way I used to pray 20 years ago is not getting the job done now. Yep, right. The other thing is we need to realize prayer does change things. <coughs> I'm going to get into that here. Here's another little quote. History is silent about revivals that did not begin with prayer. Right. Yes. <laughs> Anybody know who said that? Edward Orr. That's good. Here's, a, I think I got another one here. To desire revival and at the same time neglect personal prayer is to wish one way and walk another. That's right. I mean, that's good. I thought that was pretty good, too. Tozer said that. Here's another one, Thomas Watson. I thought I did this in lieu of the pastor. I didn't know if there's any kin, kin here or not. The angel fetched Peter out of prison, but it was prayer that fetched the angel. Come on now. Come on. Come on now. Did you get it? Let me ask you this. Did you feel it? Did you feel it? Whoa. I think our prayer is hitting some frequencies there. The angel fetched Peter out of prison, but it was prayer that fetched the angel. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Are you in touch with that? Yes. Prayer. When, when this is all over and we're in heaven and we're going to realize how everything revolved around prayer, I'm going to go, duh. 
where was my brain? Here we're trying to convince somebody when all we need to do is pray. I'm not saying we don't work hard, but is my prayer fetching angels? I don't know that I've ever fetched one, but I'm going to now. Here we go. Prayer, who needs it? Remember, the kingdom comes through prayer. Therefore, we got four prayer pods back at the back. Why? Because the kingdom comes through prayer. Make no mistake about it. Now, who needs it? I'm going to just give us a few examples. Those uh, in spiritual leadership. Now, I'm going to put up here, uh, well, I would like to put up there, uh, Franklin Graham, Samaritan's Purse. Uh, uh, we can truly say he's a spiritual leader. But also, it's any, anybody that's a spiritual leader. Do, how many of you consider yourselves a spiritual leader of someone? We all live a life of influence. That's leading someone. Second Corinthians says this, And He will yet deliver us, you also joining and helping us through your prayers. You see that? The Apostle Paul is saying that. You have helped us through your prayers, so that thanks may be given by many persons on our behalf for the favor bestowed on us through the prayers of many. Is it possible that we can throw God's favor on somebody? The answer is yes. That's good. We can. Jesus. Our prayers can throw God's favor. So I'm like, wow. This prayer thing, it's 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 pretty good bit to it, isn't it? Now, keep that in mind. Let's move on. Prayer, who needs it? We do for divine protection. So, well, Alan, what, why, why do we need to go back there and get prayer? Well, number one, you need some favor of God. If you think you would like to a little more favor of God, you get prayer. If you want divine protection, we're going to make it available. You say, well, Alan, I think I need more divine pr protection. Well, says this in 2 Thessalonians, Pray for us that the word of the Lord will spread rapidly and be glorified just as it is, just as it did also with you, and that we will be rescued from perverse and evil men. <coughs> Apostle Paul, For not all have faith, but the Lord is faithful, and He will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. Yes. Now that scripture begins with pray for us. See it? Pray for us. Now there's believers are under more attack than they should be. You say, well, Alan, I don't believe in it. Well, you do, I don't care. It's they're just the same. You can say a car's not going to run over you. Go stand in the road. <laughs> there's people that need some prayer covering. Yes. They're out there all alone. They're not supposed to be. The church is supposed to be covered in prayer. You're getting attacked on every front, and you need some prayer. That's what those iPods are for. IPods. <laughs> prayer pods are for. <laughs> and we've already got an elder sitting back there in one. If anybody needs it, Brian Cohn. All right. Who needs it for divine protection? Now, who needs prayer? We do for boldness to speak the truth. Yep. So, well, Alan, I'm just not too bold here. I, well, let's try, let's try some prayer for that. Boldness. Boldness. That of a lion, of a lioness. Boldness. Ephesians 6. And pray on my behalf that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth. That's pretty plain. Yes. That boldness might be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, Amen. for which I am an ambassador in change, 
that in proclaiming it, I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Now, there's people sitting in here saying, I would share the gospel. I just don't feel like I'm, I need, I just don't feel like I'm bold enough to do it. You might need prayer in a prayer pod if you're needing more boldness. Who else needs prayer? I do when I'm sick. Anybody got a witness? Now, we're under this persuasion as leaders in this church that the kingdom comes through prayer. The reason we got these little prayer pods, listen, we'll, we'll have them pokey dotted all over this sanctuary if you need it, because we're wanting the kingdom of God to come, and we're under this understanding the way it comes is through prayer. In other words, it's got to be real. It's got to be authentic. <coughs> we want to pray for you while you're sick. Yes. Acts 28, 7 says, And it happened that the father of Publius was lying in bed, afflicted and re recurrent fever and dysentery. And Paul went in to see him. And after he had prayed, he laid his hands on him and healed him. Yes. That's just what the book says. So we're here. We're going into a season of thy kingdom come to pray for the sick. We have opportunity for that. Let me give you another one. Prayer, who needs it? We do for unity. Well, the kingdom of God, when it comes, what holds the kingdom together is the unity of God's people. It's that unity that brings this energy. Unity for the body of Christ. It says this in John, I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but for those who also believe in me through their word, that they may be what? One. We need prayer. The kingdom comes, but we need prayer that for unity for us to stay together. Even as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us. Come on. So that the world may believe you sent me. Now, church, you got to hear something. What Jesus is saying is that the unity, listen, we say Christ in us, the hope of glory. Right. That's not what this is talking about. What this is talking about is that when we as a congregation are a unity, that we are then in Him. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Anybody see that? Yeah, gotcha. He's in us, but collectively when we're in unity, we are in Him. What that means is we're in alignment. We're in relationship. We got a straight line into heaven because the unity causes us to be in Him. Is anybody with me? Yes. Now, that is why the enemy always is trying to divide and create disunity because when we're in Him, then heaven comes to the earth. That's yes. just the way it is. Yes. So unity is huge and is key. Now, prayer, who needs it? Does anybody need some prayer for guidance? Okay. Yes. This so happens we've got five gallons of it here today of guidance. We can pray all <laughs> over you. We do for guidance. What happens with guidance? Why do we need prayer for guidance? Listen. We're wanting to be the kingdom of God on earth in this place. <laughs> there are people in here who are at a crossroads in life. You don't have to tell us what the crossroads are. <coughs> you don't know if you need to go right, left, up, go back. You have no idea. You're right at a crossroads in life. Right. You're needing some guidance. Yep. When you get prayer... We're not going, we don't know which way if you need to go right or right, but we will petition God. And we are persuaded that the power of the Holy Spirit can direct your path. Yes. The Scripture says it like this in Colossians. For this reason also, since the day we heard of it, we have not ceased to pray for you. Yes. And to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, 
to please Him in all respect. That's good. We want to pray that. If you feel like you're at a crossroads in life, yes. Jesus. Prayer, who needs it? We do for wisdom. Has anyone in here ever asked God for wisdom? That's great. That's wonderful. That's right. That's wonderful. Prayer for wisdom. The Bible says to seek it. James says this. But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to him generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. As a church, in unity, collectively, if that's something, you say, well, Alan, I've asked the Lord for that. Well, God has ordained the church to pray for you. And it's called His kingdom coming. I mean, let's try it. We might see something. Who needs prayer? We do so we can forgive our enemies. Uh-oh. I started to leave this one out, but I thought, well, better not. Aren't you glad I left it? That's a little picture of the stoning of Stephen. That's a pretty good little example, wouldn't you say? In Acts 7, it says this, They went on stoning Stephen as he called on the Lord and said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then falling on his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Having said this, he fell asleep or he died. There might be some in here and even online. You just send it in and we'll pray for you. You already on it? that you might need prayer for forgiveness to help you forgive. Jesus. Tremendously important. So who needs it? Now let's put it like this. Thy kingdom come prayer. What time is it? Wow, it's 11.35. I got to move this kingdom on here. <coughs> I call it the kingdom come prayer. Thy kingdom come prayer. What is it? Kingdom prayer can intercept things in the spirit world. Therefore, you are called an intercessor. Amen. Kingdom prayer. Jesus said you need to pray like this. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus says you need to pray like this. If the kingdom's going to come, it comes through prayer. When things change, it comes through prayer. You have to pray it all in. When we pray for the kingdom to come, we're interceding that realities might change. If you are playing football and you intercept a pass, the enemy throws a football, you intercept it and run it and make a touchdown for the kingdom. That's what we're doing when we're praying the kingdom in. The enemy's got this and though that, duh, duh, this over here. We need, we're all right. We're going to, we're on it. We're going to intercede. We're going to intercept. What Satan meant for evil, God's going to use it for good. How? Through his intercessors. We intercept. Can anybody feel that? Or is, yes. it, or is it just the air conditioner? I don't know what it is. Now, an intercessor, when we're praying in this kingdom, we are not moved by evidence. Amen. Say, well, the doctor said this, or this did that, or that. I don't, who, who cares? Don't need the evidence. That's not where we're going. Evidence does not always equal the truth. But the voice of the Holy Spirit is only one that is true. You see, evidence is trying. Do you think that there are people in prison because of the evidence, but they're innocent? So evidence will let you down, but the Holy Spirit won't. But as an intercessor, intercepting, we don't go over the evidence. It's sick, isn't it? I mean, trust me, the enemy will give you some fake news. He'll do it. Now, the voice of the Holy Spirit's truth, and it can change the outcome. Jesus is the example of, of an intercessor taking everything to 
the cross. Intercessory prayer. When we're doing this kingdom praying, what is it? You cannot be an intercessor and a judge at the same time. Uh oh. Wow. Whoa. Glory to God. I just freed you up right there. See, that gives you a lot of time to pray. Come on. Amen. Thank you. You got it. Now, there's two fields here. Two fields we're working. I'm a farmer. Two fields we're working in. Battlefield. Look at it. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. There's a true spiritual battle out here. I don't Listen, I went through a phase of my life, if I heard anybody talk about spiritual warfare again, I just was going to do something. But it didn't change the fact that it was still there. It's there. And it's real. But we got a battlefield, which we intercede in. Jesus. Then we got a harvest field. Somebody say glory, hallelujah. Yeah. You see, there's a battlefield and there's a harvest field. That's right. Now, Matthew it says this, Then saith he unto his disciples, A harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Now the enemy will try to keep us too long in the battlefield. Yes, yes. He'll distract us. Yes. It doesn't take much prayer to handle the battlefield. But our prayer... We want the bulk of our prayer to be in the harvest field. Amen? We want the kingdom of God to come. Yes. But we want to know how to pray. As we're intercepting or interceding, I want you to see this, what's going on. God Himself, God Himself is looking upon you life today. God Himself is looking. So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it, but I found no one. Yep. That's right. Wow. There are people in here and outside of these walls that's needing somebody to stand in the gap. Yes. It's dangerous out here. They don't have anybody to stand in the gap. That's what we do here at church. We're a kingdom church. We're wanting the kingdom to come. How does it come? Through prayer. We're going to stand in the gap for people that don't have anybody to stand with them. If you need prayer today, or bring somebody next week, we'll, 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 we'll pray hell off of them and have them on them. says this in Isaiah, he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. No one to intercept the darts of the demons of hell. No intercessor. No interceptor. As God is sending his messages from heaven to the earth. There's a transmission. Now, let me get off of that one there. Intercessory prayer. God Himself seeks faithful interest. You got to catch this now. God's looking at us. God's looking down here. He's looking for faithful intercessors. It says this in Psalms The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek God. Are there any? <coughs> Second Chronicles. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. You see, you thought just the devil ran to and fro over the earth, didn't you? Everybody quotes that. Look at here. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. God's looking. He's looking for us to respond to the kingdom coming. It's done through prayer. Intercessors are those who can stir themselves up. All right, Dustin. All right. Come on now. Come on. Preach. <laughs> Intercessors are those who can stir themselves up. Yes. You see, when you can stir yourself up, you know who you are. That's another teaching I started on this morning. When you know who you are and you get down, you look in the mirror and you say, 
Well, just stir your blame self up. Get off that. Come on. Come on, Come on somebody. You ain't got to wait for somebody to pat you on the back. You know who you are in Christ Jesus. Quit pouting. Get your hinder parts up and get on with the kingdom. You stir yourself up. Isaiah. And there is no one who calls on your name who stirs himself up Jesus. to take hold of you. Jesus. You see, when you can stir yourself up, you know who you are. Yes. If you wait on somebody else to stir you up, you're going to stay unstirred a long time. Jesus. That's right. Come on. We got to stir ourselves up. What does that mean? I could preach all day on stirring yourself up. Can you feel it? I think Ray comes pre-stirred. Yes. <laughs> Back got sidetracked there. Now, preacher, we got to invest in a clicker. Lord Jesus. Lord, stir up the clicker. Stir up a clicker. Intercessors are watchmen who have been set in place by God. They are very persistent. Now, hear me. We're going to pray that the kingdom comes. We're under this idea that the elders and those that are with them, if you want to help pray, you just grab an elder and we got people coming in, in and out. You're per, we, but we got to be persistent in our prayer. Yep. Persistency is our fuel. Isaiah, I have set watchmen on your walls. We're under this crazy idea that these prayer pods are walls. We've got watchmen sitting on these walls. O oh, Jerusalem, they shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent and give him no rest. <laughs> Come on. Till he establishes, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. How long are we going to pray for you? Just as long as it takes. We're going to stir, we're going to pray as long as it takes. If you get prayed for the same thing 30 times, come back 31 times. Come on. We're going to be persistent. Don't hold back our ability to be persistent. We keep praying till we see God move. Now, here's the characteristics of a successful intercessor. Uh, intercessor. They are persistence and sometimes loud. Now, I try to do something with that one. It's in the Scripture. I thought, well, I'm going to do that one. They are persistent and sometimes loud. So I'm just giving you this little warning. If we're in here, pastor's preaching, all of a sudden uh, the intercessor gets a little loud. Can you all handle that? Is that okay? Yes. I mean, I, I tried to look for a verse that we could hold prayer down. Couldn't find it. Isaiah 62, I have set watchmen upon the walls of Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day or night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. Have you ever been around some people they get, they've been interceding for 40, 50 years? Huh? Yeah. I'm telling you what. Yeah. Ed says his wife calls the horses. If you don't know what that means, talk to Ed or Maritza. <laughs> She's back there blushing right now. She gets to praying and carry on. I say, Ed, I was on the phone one time. I said, what's that noise? He said, oh, Maritza's calling the horses. <laughs> she was praying and I carried on. She didn't know I was on the phone. She sure didn't know I was going to tell it. <laughs> now, <Come on. laughs> something about an intercessor, they have great faith. Here's what happens. The more you pray, the more faith you get. You see, faith is a gift from God. It's a gift. You can't stir up. You can't make more faith in you. Faith's a gift. It comes from God. They are a selfless people. Lamentation says, Their heart cried out to the Lord, O wall of the daughter of Zion. Let tears run down like a river day and night. Give yourself no relief. Give your eyes no rest, it says. There are selfless people. The intercessor bears a sense of burden and responsibility, Ezra. Now, while Ezra was praying and while he was confessing, weeping, and bowing down before the house of God, 
So it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Here's what happens when we really get into this thing. Our persistency, our longing, our desire, our passion for the kingdom of God to come on your behalf is real. Come on. It is real. Why do we have some prayers unanswered? It says this, because of unbelief. And I've got to hurry because I've got two minutes. It says, but let him ask in faith without doubting. We can have a wrong motive. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your what? Uh Uh-oh, on your pleasure. You see, when we have these prayer pods and we're praying for people, we're not praying for ourselves. We're praying for others. It's not our own good pleasure. We are pouring ourselves out. There again, I can just keep hearing it. There's some people in here that want to be part of these uh, elder-led prayer things. You just see an elder. Uh, keeps coming through. Sometimes they're not answered because we have unforgiveness. I'm not going to read that. Y'all know the scripture. Because we do not have a teachable spirit and we do not fear the Lord. I'm just showing you some reasons sometimes our prayers are not answered. It said, and so it says it in Proverbs, then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Now, how to have an effective prayer life? Believe on Him and love one another. Believe on Him and love one another. That's how you have an effective prayer life. Believe on Him and love one another. John says, and whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. There it is. Bam, right there. Or Dustin says, boom. boom. Right there it is. Jesus. We must have humility, and I'm getting ready to close here. Second Chronicles. You know the scripture, if my people who call by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from them wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. All of you, clothe yourselves with humility towards one another because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. We need more faith. It says this in Matthew, whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. All right, I'm going to stop there as we, as we move in. It's uh, 10 till 12, and uh, we're going to just <coughs> worship a minute. There's some people already in the prayer uh, pods. Uh, I'm ask the elders to go ahead and get back there. If you, if you want to pray her back there, that's fine. If you want to come up here for prayer, that's fine. Uh, it's just what whatever, but we're going to go into a moment of worship as Karen leads us. And uh, as she leads us, all right, we're going to have, uh, we got elders at the back, got Dustin up here, want to have some uh, Elizabeth, and a couple intercessors will be in this prayer room over here. Now, the rest of us, for just a few, 10 minutes or so here, now the prayer can go on after we close the service. You say, well, Alan, see, we're, we're really and truly wanting to have the opportunity for the kingdom of God to come to this earth. Now, as prayer is going on, it's the praise and the worship can fuel the prayer. So the rest of us that are in here, I'm ask, going to ask you to stand. I'm going to ask you if, you if you if you feel led to move to any of these places of prayer. There's four at the back, one over here. I got Dustin up front, up here. You can say, well, Alan, I'm, I'm not needing it that bad. Listen, whatsoever ye ask is what the Scripture says. We want an opportunity to pray. The kingdom of God has to be prayed in. 
So, Lord Jesus, we're asking and praying that you'd be with us today. Through the power of your Spirit, we're asking and praying, oh God, that your kingdom would come. Lord Jesus, for those of us that are in here worshiping, let our worship be as a great praise or prayer that you might encounter. Lord, we're as a church wanting to stand in behalf of the needs of your people that your kingdom might come. In Jesus' name we pray. And we worship like this. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. That the Spirit of the Lord is here. The atmosphere is changing. The atmosphere is changing now. For the spirit of the Lord. If somebody has a fear of cancer. Let us pray for you. Evidence is let us pray for you. All around. That the spirit of the Lord is here. Flow in this place, fill our hearts with your love, your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love, your love surrounds us. Somebody has a, a problem sleeping because of fear or, or uh, for the spirit I just ask you to get prayer. Probably over here with Elizabeth. If you have fear or problem sleeping or something like that, I ask you just to go over it with the intercessors over here. The spirit of the Lord is here. The atmosphere is changing now, for the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around, but the Spirit of the Lord is here, overflow. If you have a uh, real, sh almost a, I just feel like somebody's feeling some of rejection, just a, a very, 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 very heavy uh, sense of rejection. Very, very, very heavy sense of rejection. Um, I can just sense that. We want to give you prayer for that. Let me give you a prayer for that. Just, just like a tremendous, heavy sense of rejection. Heavy sense of rejection. Are all the prayer pods full back there? Is anybody empty? All of them have people? Okay.
Spirit of God, fall fresh on us. We need your presence, your kingdom come, your will be done here as in heaven. Spirit. can happen now for the spirit of the Lord is in this place the evidence is all around but the spirit of the Lord is here a miracle can happen Remember, the kingdom of God comes through prayer. Through prayer. Through prayer. Conversation with heaven. The evidence is all around. But the spirit of the Lord is here. We invite you to stay. We got these prayer areas, prayer pods, and up here. We will be here as, as uh, more than glad to stay and to pray as long as we need to pray. And for any prayer need that you have, remember, the kingdom of God comes through conversation with heaven. So I'm going to dismiss us as we, Karen will keep leading us in worship. I ask that us just stay in a very reverent mode of this congregation, of this sanctuary as we're going to be praying for many. And it's, uh, we love, we would love just to pray till two or three or four o'clock. We don't care. We are praying and asking for the kingdom of God to be in this place. If you're not sure about your salvation, please stay. Please stay. Let us just talk to you about salvation, okay? So let's pray and Karen will continue to lead us and you're welcome to leave or welcome to stay in worship. And if you want to stay and, and help just keep praying, we invite you to do that. So, Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for today, oh God. Lord Jesus, we truly confess that we feel like little children just asking their father to come. But, dear God, the needs of your people are many. The pain is a lot. The sicknesses are a lot. So, Lord God, we need healing. Healing of the body, soul, and spirit. Healing, oh God, that we might move forward in faith. Healing that we might be an evidence of your kingdom on this earth. Dear God, we don't claim to be super spiritual. We just claim to be superly in love with you and your kingdom. So, Lord God, fill our hearts with faith. Fill our hearts with faith. Fill our hearts with passion. And fill our hearts with your kingdom is our prayer. Bless these people as they leave. I pray that they'll be so infected with your kingdom that it'll be bestowed on whoever they come in contact with. In Jesus' name, let them go in peace and in mercy. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 
Atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is here. Atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord.
Online family, this has been just an amazing, amazing time in the Lord's presence and in the Word. We know already that this message has spoken to so many out there. We've been praying for you even during the service. And so we want you to know that you can keep putting your prayer um, comments on the comment area, and we will keep checking them and keep praying for you all week, all the way to Wednesday and on. So we're just so thankful you're with us. We know it's spoken to you today. Share what God's doing out there. What is he doing inside of your lives? What answers to prayer are you already seeing? We'd love to hear it. As prayer goes on in here in our prayer pods and all over the sanctuary, which, again, this is more than we've seen in many years, we want to just agree and pray and close out the service and believe that wherever you are, he's going to spread this prayer movement. He's going to use you to go out and pray for others. He's going to use you in your story with Jesus and your testimony to see God move. You're going to be that watchman on your community's wall. So anyway, let's close in prayer. Father, again, we thank you for this time. We bless you. We praise you. Thank you so much for what's going on in this house, as well as online all over the world right now with those that are watching and connected with us. We pray in the name of Jesus, you'll pour out your spirit wherever they're at. Stir them up to be watchmen on the walls. They've been deputized and assigned to their area, their community, their family, their workplace, their school place. Father, put them as watchmen on the walls, intercessors in the name of Jesus, pressing in in this season. And Lord, we are in a season where you're moving again in power, in presence. So would you increase your outpouring through them and in them and in folks around them. Help folks to ask for prayer, just to walk up and ask for prayer from folks that are connecting tonight, today as watchmen. Father, I pray that these watchmen will be empowered to reach out to those that are hurting around them and see that release of your presence in people's lives like they haven't seen in years or ever. And Lord, we just thank you for every person. Meet them in their needs. And Father, all the prayers we've already prayed for you, pray that you'll sow those up and seal them up in hearts and release your fruit in them in Jesus' name. We love you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for being online with us. Folks, This whole thing could not happen without all of us together. You are a part of this. Your energy, your excitement, your expectations and expectancy, your sharing all these videos, it's what's stirring up a movement. So we appreciate you. We thank you. And we look forward to more. God bless you this week. We will see you next time. Amen.